The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Greetings and welcome to yet another e-learning session. My name is Nkumbe Ivo Ebon, your physical education and sports teacher. Before we start our lesson of today, in, the, in our last lesson, remember I gave you an assignment that was supposed to be done. And we are going to make a correction of the assignment to see if you got it right. First, we are going to define the following terms. Fundamental support. What is fundamental support? We are also asked to define suspension, to define locomotion, and to define coordination. Now the first question, fundam, what is a fundamental support? And we gave proposed answers. We have one, a support on which we stand, part of the body that serves as a support on the ground to prevent us from falling, part of the foot that acts as support on the ground preventing us from falling, part of the shoes. The right answer, we have part of the foot that acts as support on the ground preventing us from falling. The next question is what is suspension? A support on which, for our proposed answer, we have a support on which we stand, a step in which no, no leg touches the ground, part of the leg which acts as support on the ground to prevent us from falling. And we actually had another proposed answer, part of the shoes for races. The answer, is a stage in which no leg touches the ground. That is what suspension is. The next question that we were given for our homework was what is locomotion? And for the proposed answers, a mode of displacement, a means of displacement, part of the body serving as support to prevent us from falling, action of moving and displacement from one area to another. And the right answer is, action of moving and displacement from one area to another. Now, what is coordination? We were also asked to define coordination in our last assignment. Proposed answers, we have a support on which we stand, a stage in which no leg touches the ground, logical movement of body parts to obtain a given result, and parts of the shoes of for races. And the right answer is a logical movement of body parts to obtain a given resource. That's what coordination is all about. That brings us to our lesson of today, our fourth lesson on the team, basic notions on races. So today we are going to look on at basic notions on races. In order to unfold our lesson, we are going to follow this plan. First, we are going to give the objectives of our lesson. After which we are going to look at the previous knowledge. After the previous knowledge, we are looking at the problem situation. Like I told you in life, everything that we do in life is to solve a particular problem. After the problem situation, that will take us into our learning activities. These are activities that we are going to unfold together 
that will provide solution to our problem situation. After our learning activities, we are going to look at application exercises to see how well we have understood the lesson of today. Lastly, we are going to give an assignment that will prepare us for the next lesson. Objectives of our lesson. The first objective is to improve on the specific vocabularies of races. The second objective that we have for today is to have some knowledge on the types of races. And the last objective is to bring out the difference between walking and running. There is a fundamental difference between walking and running. So our third objective will bring to bring out that difference. For our previous knowledge, in our previous knowledge, we are going to define a step. We are going to look at the definition of work. We are going to do a presentation of the lower and the upper limbs of the body. These are the parts of the body that are involved in races. And we are also going to look at parts of the foot. Now for the notion of a step, if you look at this video that we have, it will show you how you see somebody making successive step. So a step is an act of placing one leg before another. The act of placing one leg before another. That is a step. Looking at this image, you see image one, two, three, and four. In image four, you see a child in an upright position, ready to walk. And during walk, remember, you must walk on two legs. The main parts of the human body. In order to understand our lesson for today, we have to look at the parts of the human body. And as you see, this is a human body. You see the head, you see the upper limbs, the two hands, and then you see the lower limbs, that is the two legs. And we equally see the different parts of the body. So the human body is fully involved in activities of locomotion, especially during races. So in order to understand races very well, we need to understand the human body and how the different parts of the body are implicated in races. Now look at these are different parts of the body. You have the upper and the lower limbs. These are different parts of the body. A, you have the lower limb. B, you have the upper limb, which is the arm. C, you have the foot. And the last image, which is D, you have the hand. So these are the main parts that play a very important role during races. And subsequently, as we develop our lesson, we are going to see the different functions that these parts of the body play during races. Now the parts of the upper limbs. The upper limbs is divided into three main parts. As you can see here, you have the arm, you have the forearm, and you have the hand. So these are the main parts of the upper limbs. If you look at the lower limbs, the lower limbs also is divided into three main parts. You have the thigh, you have the cruise, and you have the foot. And these parts are equally subdivided into other parts. So these are the two main parts that are involved during races. The upper limb, what is the function of the upper limb during races? As we see, it is used for balance for coordination and for the manipulation of objects. That's the main function of the upper limb. And I told you that the upper limb is divided into three parts, the arm, the forearm, and the hand, as you can see on this image that is being projected to us. The lower limb. What is the function of the lower limb, or in other words, the leg? It is used for locomotion and support. Remember, the leg is the part of the body that supports the body weight during walks and during races. For a real life situation, 
Remember I told you that everything that we do in life is to solve a particular situation. So today in our lesson, we are equally presented with a situation that we are going to provide answers to. In the course of a discussion with friends, something that to run is walking rapidly. Others think that walking is different from running. On your arrival, they turn towards you to get your own opinion. What do you tell them to solve this problem? So this is our problem situation of today. And in the course of our lesson, we are going to provide answers to clarify the worry of these schoolmates. For our learning activity, in our learning activity of today, we are going to look at displacement. We are going to look at definition of walking and running. We are going to look at the strides, and then we are going to bring out the difference between walking and running. All this will be done in our learning activities. Displacement. Now we are going to look at what is displacement. It's a change of place from one location to another, or a change of position from one location to another. That is what displacement is all about. Definition of running and walking. Running. Running is displacing oneself in an upright position using consistent strides with weight, with the weight on one leg and a period of suspension of the two legs. So that's the main definition of running. It's a consistent, it's displacing oneself in an upright position using consistent strides with the weight on one leg and a period of suspension of the two legs. Now what is working? Working is the act of placing one leg before the other, frequently without a period of suspension, without a period of, I insist, without a period of suspension. When we look at these modes of displacement, the first image shows us an athlete who is practicing runs. The second image shows somebody who is walking and the third image shows an individual jumping. So these are different modes of displacement. If we look at the strike, now the strike, this person is running by making strides. This person is running by making strides, and strides are successive steps that are being placed at regular intervals. Now you make a strike by placing one foot before the other after a moment of suspension. So a strike is therefore the distance between two long decisive steps when running. That's called a strike. The distance between two long decisive steps when running is called a strike. You look at uh, this athlete is all who makes strides in order to move forward when running. So it is the number of strides, the frequency of strides that you make that will propel you forward during running. Now we look at a stride is divided into two phases. Let us look at from the image that you see. You see that a stride is divided into two phases. Let us look at the phases of a stride. Now we have the first phase, which is the support phase. The support phase is a phase in which the legs are in contact. One leg is in contact with the ground. We equally have the second phase, which is the suspension phase. At this particular stage, all the two legs are temporarily suspended from the ground. And you can see a demonstration of the support phase. Here we have these two images, three images, they show the support phase. And then this circle shows all the legs that are being temporarily suspended from the ground, showing us the suspension phase. Now we look at this image. 
In this image, you see all the parts of the foot. See that all the parts of the foot do not touch the ground at any given point in time. All the parts of the foot do not touch the ground. So the parts of the foot, they touch the ground successively at given intervals. So when we see the parts of the foot, we are going to look at the parts of the foot that touches the ground first, which one follows after, and which one comes last. The order in which the parts of the feet touch the ground during runs can be shown, as we can see on this slide. So you see the different parts of the foot. You see the order in which they touch the ground. The first one that touches the ground, you have the heel. The heel touches the ground first, followed by the sole. The sole of the feet touches the ground second. And then lastly, we have the toes that touches the ground. When we look at this image, we have an alert who is running. And when you look at this line, this red line, it's like a line that divides the body at the center of gravity. So when the person runs as one leg is on the ground, the foot is placed on the axis of the body during support of the soles of the feet. So that is what supports the body weight. And this axis divides the body into two zones. We have the front zone of the body that you can see from this image. And lastly, you have the back zone of the body, as you can see. This image also shows parts of the foot in close contact with the ground during runs. It shows that the part of the foot that are in close contact during runs, as you can see from this circle, the back leg, you can see the toes that are in close contact with the ground. And even from here, and you can see the axis that divides the body into two. So you see that in close contact with the ground, the heel comes first, the sole followed by the toes. We look at now the phases of a stride during the support phase. And like I said, the support phase is that phase where the leg is in close contact with the ground. And if you look at the different phases, you can see from this diagram, you can see three images and showing arrows. The arrow is showing the direction of the ray, the runs. And you can see the heel strikes. You can equally see the support and you can see the impulsion. The impulsion is the toes. The toes are in close contact with the ground. In the support phase, the soles of the feet are in close contact with the ground. In the heel stride, you see the heel in close contact with the ground. The faces of a stride, looking at the direction of run, we have the different faces of a stride. The first, we have the heel strike. We have the mid stance. We have the takeoff and we have the suspension. So these are the different phases of the strike. We have fall, the heel strike, the mid stand, the takeoff, and the suspension. The work now is a fundamental difference between walks and runs. So the major difference between walks and runs may be seen to be may seem to be speed. Is speed a fundamental difference? Is tiredness a fundamental difference? Is suspension a fundamental difference? For our problem, the major difference between walks and runs is suspension. Suspension is the major difference between runs and walks. When we observe this image, we observe an image the difference we can also establish between runs and walks, apart from suspension during runs, is the length of strides. The length of strides are longer during runs than during walks, as is illustrated on this diagram. 
So during walks, the length of strides are shorter, but during runs, the length of strides are longer, as we can see on the images. Now during this lesson, we study the specific vocabularies on races. We also revisited the phases of strides, and we established the fundamental or the major difference between walks and runs during this lesson. Having come to our end of our lesson, but in order that we see if you have understood the lesson and to which extent you have understood, we have to get into what we call application exercises. This application exercises is to test your knowledge of the lesson that we just had. Now the first question, what does it mean to displace oneself? What does it mean to displace oneself? For our answer, to displace oneself means to change position from one location to another. To displace oneself means to change position from one location to another. Now the second question, what is a stride? And we have proposed answers. It is the length of the stride of a jump, the measure of length of the step of a runner, the distance between two foot placements during a run, the measure of the length of a jump in displacement. What is the right answer? The right answer is the distance between two foot placement during a run. That is what we call a stride. The next question. What is the attitude of the leg, position of feet, and name of the stage? If you look at this image, you see the image, you see the placement of the leg. How is the attitude of the leg? And what is the name of this stage of runs for an answer you see that the leg is almost straight if you look at the leg that is in front it's almost straight and the foot is in front the foot is on the ground and the part of the ground that is of the foot that is on the ground is this the heel and it represents the reception face you know after a brief period of suspension the outlet has to land on the ground. So this is called the reception phase. Equally look, observe this image. What is the attitude of the leg and the position of the feet? And equally the name of this stage. So the leg is straight and the foot is behind. The leg, if you look at the leg behind, and it is the push or impulsion face. The push or the impulsion face. And you can see here, this is the push or the impulsion face. And this is a face that permits the runner to take a longer stride in order to run faster. Look at the positions of legs. What does this image refers to? Remember, we saw this image in the course of our lesson. So this image represents stages of the movement of the foot. This image represents stages of the movement of the foot. The next question, what do these images represent? For proposed answers, we have the length of the stride of a jump, the measure of length of the step of a runner, the distance between two foot placements and the measure of the length of a jump. And the right answer is the distance between two foot placement. The answer is the distance between two foot placement. So our lesson of today was to showcase that running is actually different from walking. And we gave the fundamental difference between running and walking, which was so a period of suspension in running. But during walking, there is no period of suspension. 
So our main lesson, our lesson of today was to showcase the, that running and walking is different. Unlike the argument that the students had during our problem situation. So this is to clarify the doubt that running is different from walking. We have come to the end of our lesson, but we cannot end our lesson without giving an assignment. The next thing that we are going to ask you is to define the following terms. Define what we call springing and equally define what we call jumps. When you do this, it will help you to prepare you for our next lesson. So make sure that you do the assignment because it will prepare you for our next lesson. In order to prepare our lesson of today, we consulted some documents. The first document that we consulted was a study program for physical education and sports for Form 1. 2020. We equally con consulted World Athletics. We equally consulted World Athletics 2020 rules. So World Athletics, the main document that we consulted was 2020 rules. We equally consulted a website www.wikipedia.org and it was consulted on the 15th of March 2021 at exactly 2.30 p.m. We have come to our, the end of our lesson. Remember that the next topic that we are going to treat in our next lesson will be titled Basic Notion on Jumps. That is why I ask you to give the definition of jumps so that it will prepare you for our next lesson. So our next lesson will be on activities of mobility, basic notions on jumps. Manetambia niña ne injo biayen.